Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is a lecture in English, obviously, about the opera Carmen, okay, by Bizet. Uh, this is part of a series that, that Ikai is doing on single operas. We started with opera history, then we have La Traviata, and uh, I hope you can follow uh, this opera and all of the operas that we have to offer, okay? Come back often and uh, check the other options we have here for, for opera lectures, okay? Okay, so today we're going to talk about the opera Carmen. Ooh. We have, I, I always like to start with a little bit of the background, a little bit of background about the opera itself, okay? So, uh, Carmen was inspired by a novel, a novella actually, a novella is a short novel by uh, French writer Prosper Mérimée, okay? This is, uh, is an interesting guy. He was um, very much into uh, museums and uh, he was responsible for part of the renovation of the Notre Dame uh, Cathedral in Paris in the 19th century. He was a friend of Georges Saint, you know Georges Saint? Uh, a friend of uh, Chopin, Frédéric Chopin, he was, uh, was his, his mate, and um, writer, French writer, uh, Georges Saint. And uh, very interesting guy, Mérimée, very interesting guy. It's, it's worth reading a little bit about him. So he writes this uh, novella, Carmen, and um, Georges Bizet reads it and likes it, there's a 30-year uh, lapse between a gap. Sorry, my English is not the best today, okay? I apologize. So, but there's a 30-year a gap between the novella is released in 1845, Carmen, and uh, the opera, 1875, in Paris, okay? Uh, Bizet, the composer, Georges Bizet, had written before... Uh, the, his other great opera is uh, The Pearl Fishers, which is from 1863, so 12 years before Carmen. And Bizet was not a very famous um, composer at the time. Actually, Bizet was, was never hugely famous. He, he had the misfortune of dying the year he released Carmen. So he released Carmen in 1875, and he died in the same year. So it's, a, it's sad, but uh, so it is. Life is tough, okay? Okay, so a little bit about the opera itself. Carmen is, in a, is a category of opera that's called opera comique. And it's very interesting because you say, well, Carmen is not a comic opera. Be careful. Opéra comique is not comic opera. Opéra comique is a, a kind of opera that has dialogues, uh, spoken dialogues in, in it, okay? So, uh, opera is 100% sung. When it's in French and it has dialogues, we call it opéra comique, okay? There's even a theater in Paris called opéra comique, specifically for this kind of opera. And for us, it's kind of crazy. We go, why do I have to have a specific theater for uh, operas with dialogue? Because tradition is high in these things, okay? So that's why. So you have Carmen is an opera comique. And, and just, just to complete this, this stuff, remember that Viennese uh, call, they don't call opera comique, they call it operetta. So if you, uh, if you hear um, Die Flutter Mouse by uh, Strauss' uh, son, that's an operetta. And Ameri in, in the United States, they call it mu Amer the musical. Okay, an American musical is the same thing, an operetta, opera comique. And the magic flute is also an opera with spoken dialogue. But Germans don't call it opera comique for obvious reasons. They call it Zingspiel. So magic flute is a Zingspiel. Carmen is a, an opera comique. Uh, Die Fledermaus is an operetta. 
Miss Saigon is a musical, but it's all the same thing, okay? It's music, musical numbers with dialogues, okay? So glad to have all of you here, especially in the English lecture. Obrigado todo mundo aqui. Eu sei aula hoje em inglês. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, Carmen, 1875. We have four characters. Don Jose, Carmen, Escamillo, and Micaela. And then there's a fifth character that I will talk to you uh, later. Let's start. Carmen is a gypsy, a free woman, a woman who wants to love whoever she wants to love. And that is problematic, where in the 19th century she has to die. And alas, she dies, okay? Free women in the 19th century, not a good idea, not a good combination. So Carmen, a gypsy, free lover. Then, Don Jose, a corporal in the, in the Spanish army, poor man. You know, he is just not very smart and he is very jealous. He is that simple guy that left his girlfriend behind uh, and went to the big city, which is uh, Seville, Seville, and um, he, he has the misfortune of meeting Carmen, who is just too much for him, okay? So, Carmen the Gypsy, Don Jose the Corporal, uh, Escamillo, the bullfighter, woo! Testosterone, baritone, all of the good stuff is there, okay? And obviously, he, he and uh, Don Jose are going to fight for Carmen's heart. And it's no contest because this Camillo just... This Camillo is just this Camillo, poor Don Jose. And then the fourth character is Micaela. Micaela in French. And she is this pure and chaste 17-year-old girl from the country who Don Jose abandoned to go to Seville. And... Um, but she's waiting for him, and uh, she takes good care of, of his mother, who will be interesting to hear about that in the middle of the plot, okay? The fifth character that I mentioned is jealousy. Don Jose's jealousy is so strong. He's such a dumb person that he, the, his jealousy leads the way. So he doesn't speak for himself. It's his jealousy that speaks louder than his own feelings. Okay, it's, it's unbelievable. And then tragedy ensues. Okay, so those are our characters. As Carmen begins... And we have the full overture, which I can't play because of copyright reasons. If you want to know more about this, go to a Kai's Musical Encyclopedia and click on Copyright. I explain all of this, okay? Um, but this is a, a, an, an interesting 19th century overture when the themes from the opera are going to be presented. So this first theme, it's, uh, uh, it's taken from the fourth act when the, the toreros are preparing to get into the bullfight. And then the, the, the crowd cheers. Yay! Yo, yay! Okay? Then there is the torero, the toreador theme. Beautifully sung by the cellos. Oh, it's a phenomenal uh, melody. It's amazing. Carmen has so many great melodies. That's one of the reasons why it became so famous. The, the arias are gorgeous. Just well, This Torero uh, uh, theme is phenomenal. Just phenomenal. And then as the, as the overture is coming to an end, you hear the jealousy theme. Listen to this. Let me see if I can find it here. This is the Toreador. Ram, pam, param, ram, chim, param. And then I have to interrupt, but then it, it goes to the end. No, no. 
no, no. This is the tragedy that uh, theme, okay? Na da di da da di da la da da. You know that something's gonna go wrong, okay? This theme, writing the overture, shows you that this is a tragedy, okay? Carmen is actually a is that English precursor? Precursor, I think it is. You know, the predecessor to. Uh, Verismo operas, uh, such as Puccini's La Boheme, uh, Mascagni and Leo Cavallo, Cavalleria Rusticana, and uh, Pagliacci, they are operas about peasants, operas about simple people with simple problems such as jealousy, okay? Uh, and it, it was not very, very popular in the beginning, but but later on, obviously, I mean, here we are talking about Carmen, okay? So, as the opera begins, the first act, we are in a, in a plaza in Seville, and um, we, are, we see the, the, the cigar factory where Carmen works. It's a, it's a cigar factory where, where only women work, and Carmen's one of them. They roll cigars. And everybody's waiting for the intermission, for um, uh, cafe time, okay, for the... Oh, my English today is bad. But anyway, we're waiting for break time. That's what it is. Ah, whoo! Okay, for coffee. The girls come out of the, of the factory to smoke a little bit and have some coffee. And, you know, all of the army is waiting there to see the girls come down. And uh, that's what happens with... Uh, La cloche a sonné. The bell rang and the girls come down and meet all the guys and ooh, all that. And among um, among the the ladies there is Carmen. Okay, give me just one second here. I have to find something here. Don't go away. Aha! Here I am. So. Carmen, um, Carmen shows herself, and, and even in Don Jose, who remembers? Don Jose is, uh, he promised his love to Micaela back in his village. But here, Carmen sees, sees Don Jose, and she's, she's all, with all her charm here, and she sings. This is the... Abanera. Abanera is a, is a rhythm from Havana. Havana, Abanera. Uh, and uh, Havana, Cuba. And uh, he, uh, she sings here, uh, love is a free bird with free will. She's singing, obviously, about herself. And uh, the, the, the attendance is horrified. Oh, my God, an opera about this. Woo! So it's, it's complex. And um, she looks at Don Jose, they look at each other, there's a first, uh, first eye contact there, okay? But then, who shows up in the, in the village? Micaela. Micaela, which is, remember the girl that Don Jose left behind in his village? Um, she comes and she's just there to be presented to the audience and they sing a duet. Don Jose and Micaela sing a beautiful duet. duet. Parle-moi de ma mère. Parle-moi de ma mère. Speak of my mother, oh, Micaela. Because, you know, we Latino people, and that's, you know, Latino as in Latin people, okay? French, Spanish, uh, Portuguese, uh, you know, all the Brazilians, all the, you know, all Latin America, all that. We and our mothers, okay? Talk about that, okay? It's all confused, all complicated uh, relationship. So, there you are. Uh, Don Jose uh, grabs Mikael and says, Speak of my mother. And she sings about her, his mother, and it's, uh, you know, it's a gorgeous duet. It's gorgeous music. It's really very beautiful. It's a shame that I can't play here. But remember that if you go to Spotify, Ekai's Spotify, 
the list I prepared for you, the list uh, Understanding Carmen is there. So just go to Ekai Spotify, it's free, and listen to it after listening to this lecture, okay? Uh, so they sing this duet and Michaela goes away, oh, everybody's happy, and then what happens? Oh, help, help! Oh, the girls are fighting. Okay, so Carmen got herself into a fight in the cigar factory. And she pulls a knife. And, uh, well, anyway, they bring her down and they lock her up. Okay, it's like, Carmen, you have to go to jail because you're a naughty girl. Naughty girl. And uh, guess who is... Uh, who is who is chosen to take care of Carmen, okay? Don José, you guessed it, absolutely. And as she is there in jail, he, she, she sings to him, and um, she sings exactly this. It's the Seguidilla, it's called the Seguidilla, she sings. Près de rempart de Civille, chez mon ami Lila Spastia. Close to Seville, at uh, Lila Spastia's tavern. J'irai dans cela, Sigidi, à boire du manzanilla. So, what's happening here? She is throwing her charm on him and she's saying, uh, Don Jose, if you let me escape, I will wait for you at this tavern close to Seville and uh, we can have some fun there. Well, Don José promptly forgets Micaela because hormones are speaking loudly there. Or loud? Does it help loudly? I'm not sure. Anyway, hormones are talking loud and uh, he lets her escape. And uh, of course, uh, that's a problem. And we hear, we hear this as Carmen is disappearing into the world. Look, this is the end of the first act, here. This is Carmen escaping! <laughs> and she disappears into the, the night. It's not night, but that's okay. Anyway, so that's the end of the first act. One of the biggest problems with Carmen is that um, the first act is very long, okay? So for non-opera goers, Carmen presents a, this challenge. For people who enjoy opera, they don't care. And I stay five hours there watching, that's fine. But for people who are beginning to enjoy opera, that is one problem. F Carmen's first act is 50 minutes long. Then the second act is 40 minutes long. The third act is 30 minutes long, and the last act is 20 minutes long. So 50, 40, 30, 20. It, it, it could be worse, of course, but the first act actually uh, drains a lot of energy from people who are not very used to opera, okay? Even though it's a lively act, it, you're already a little tired. And then comes the second act, which is in a tavern. <clears throat> Sorry. This tavern is it's a phenomenal scene, great music, great ballet, it's really phenomenal. But what is important about the action here is that Carmen is there with, his, with her friends and um, guess who shows up? <laughs> exactly! The Torero, the bullfighter. Votre tos, la fille la France, Charles. I, I never learned this song. Anyway, so the Torero shows up with all his hormones and showing, showing his big sword, and everybody's happy about it, okay? Especially Carmen, okay? But what is she doing there in the tavern? One of the things she's doing, she's waiting for Don Jose. Remember the first act? He actually got locked up after he, he let her escape. He was like, okay, pal, so you've got to go to jail for letting the gypsy escape. 
and she did and she he went to jail but she's waiting for him and he shows up later on so the torero comes and he drinks his beer or whatever and then everybody goes after him and carmen is alone in the tavern and who shows up don jose exactly um that's funny actually the pronunciation of jose because uh Jose is a Spanish name, but because it is in, the opera is in French, they don't call Don Jose, they call him Don Jose, which is very funny. One of the weird things about opera, okay? So it's Don Jose. Um, anyway, Don Jose shows up and Carmen, whoa, starts dancing for him. Yeah, je vais danser en votre honneur. I'm gonna dance in your, in your honor. And she plays the castanets for him and all that. When she's doing that, she's all happy. And he's all like, oh my God, I'm gonna die here. This is the best thing since sliced bread. And then what he hears? What does he hear? It's time to go back to the barracks. And he says, Carmen, just a second. I know you're dancing, but just a second. Uh, listen. And she says, what? He said, well, I have to go back to the barracks. She's like, wait a minute. I'm, I'm Carmen. Do you have an idea what this is? I'm a gypsy. I'm Carmen. Look at me. I'm hot. I'm dancing for you. And you are complaining about, you're, you're saying that you've got to go because of the barracks, because of, of, of the trumpet play. What? the heck what's going on here well she says go and but never look back i have you you know you're as dumb as i thought okay nevertheless as he well then he says no carmen no i love you listen i love you so much i'm gonna sing la fleur que tu m'avais jeté dans ma prison était resté. anyway she threw a, a flower at him on the first act and he kept that flower Ooh. and he took the flower to prison to jail when he was there and he smells it and the flower is fresh and he sings to her about the flower and oh, blah 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 but she is like don jose let me tell you look i was dancing for you and you gotta go because of the trumpet because of the barracks go leave me alone i you know whatever and he says, okay, goodbye for nevermore. Adieu pour jamais. Nevertheless, as he's leaving the, the tavern, his superior shows up. Ah! <laughs> and um, he says, Don Jose, you're late for, for the barracks anyway. You're bad corporal. <sighs> and... Um, now he's, you know, he is in this situation where he can't go back to the barracks. He already, Carmen is angry at him. And this is how the second act ends. <laughs> it's like, it's a, it's a big uh, boo for Don Jose. And uh, it's very interesting because the last song of the second act, when I do this is because I'm looking for the track, okay? So I'm sorry about that. Uh, the last act, the last song of the second act is this chorus it's so gorgeous it's an ode to freedom okay and uh, the, all the gypsies are singing and you know the Carmen saying I'm going to the mountains and uh, we are all going to the mountains celebrate freedom and life is beautiful and Don Jose who's a corporal with the army he's all like out of place there in that celebration of freedom but nevertheless there he is and he can't go back to the barracks because he had just had a fight with his superior well tough and that's the, the end of the second act and then we get to the third act which is the biggest problem of Carmen, for me, not a, not in the sense of uh, poorly composed. Who am I? No, no, no. It's gorgeous music, gorgeous. But for the non-opera goer, for for someone who is not used to opera, you're you're already you already went through the first and second act. You're tired, and then the third act, which is going to last for thirty minutes, is in the dark, in the mountains. Everything is 
blue and it's supposed to be snowing and you're like oh my god i'm gonna sleep don't sleep if you're if you're in a good theater when you go to watch carmen drink loads of coffee okay between the second and third act so that you can stay alive for the third act because it's beautiful in the third act as we are in this um we are with the gypsies in their camp, okay? So we're, we're, we're camping with them in the mountain, with the gypsies. Carmen is there, and Don José, she, she brought him alone. What, what, a, what a waste of time, but there he is, okay? And uh, the gypsies are all together there, and they say, Don José, go, go watch to see if someone is coming up, okay? Leave us alone. And uh, there's this very interesting trio it's the, the card trio, cards, playing cards. The gypsies are, three, three ladies are reading the cards. One of them is Carmen. And they're reading the, the future. And uh, uh, it's a very beautiful trio with the aria, with the, the card aria, as, as we call, where it doesn't matter how many times they try to read Carmen's future. La mort, toujours, la mort, death always death so tragedy will ensue we all know that this is what's gonna happen anyway um don jose is looking to see if someone is coming up and who shows up the torero is there with carmen and as they start fighting because don jose is jealous well this torero and i love carmen and carmen don jose go away you just you you're lame Anyway, who shows up as they're having this fight? Don Jose and the Torero are having this fight. The Torero's name is Escamillo. So Don Jose and Escamillo are fighting. Who shows up? Who on earth shows up? Micaela. Remember the, the lady, the, the girlfriend from the first act? She, the 17-year-old pure and chaste virgin, climbed up the mountain to go after Don Jose. It, give me a break, okay? But opera is crazy. That's what she does. So she goes up and she sings gorgeous. Uh, it's, it's a phenomenal aria where she sings, she, she asks, oh God, protect Don Jose, protect our love, blah, blah, blah. It's gorgeous. But what is Micaela doing in the top of a mountain in a gypsy camp? It's crazy, but nevertheless, there she is. And Don Jose says, Micaela, ah, come on, I like you very much, but I can't, look, Carmen. And then Micaela plays the best card that uh, you can play in a, in a tenor. She says, oh, Don Jose, by the way, your mother's sick. <laughs> and Don Jose breaks down and everything is horrible. And he says, okay, Micaela, you convinced me. I will go back with you. But he looks at Carmen and says, but we'll see each other again. This is not going to be like this, okay? We'll see each other again. And that's the end of the third act when we're preparing for tragedy, but not yet. As the first act, as the last act starts, the fourth act, we are outside a um, bullfight. And uh, the, the audience, everybody's outside, and we're waiting for, Don, for Escamillo to come in. He comes in, there's a parade, glorious music, phenomenal music. And uh, Carmen is all beautifully dressed to see her new boyfriend, Escamillo, in a bullfight. And obviously, as she's preparing to enter the arena, who shows up? Exactly, Don Jose. And he's all disgruntled, and he's ugly, and he's jealous, and they have this horrible fight. And uh, it's, it's actually one of the, one of the biggest problems uh, for singers who, who, who will interpret both Carmen and Don Jose is the fact that their hardest material for, to sing is in this last duet. It's, you know, it's a three-hour opera, and in the last 10 minutes, that's when Carmen and Jose have to give their most. I've sung uh, bits of, of Don Jose. I don't have the, the material to sing the full opera. 
but um, I've sung uh, the aria and this duet. I've, I, I almost died. It's like, I'm telling you, it's hard. It's tough stuff. And uh, it's, it's funny because it starts with C'est moi, c'est toi, c'est toi, c'est moi. Are, is, uh, is that you? Yes, it's me. Wow, c'est toi, c'est moi, very deep. And they meet each other and they fight it horribly. And the music is phenomenal, really. Listen to this. If you, if you listen to anything in this opera, listen to the last 10 minutes. It's phenomenal. Great uh, uh, musical emotion. A, a, a phenomenal piece of, of the romantic period. And uh, he says, come back to me. And she says, I don't want you anymore. Come on, give me a break. Or kind of, I mean, are you stupid or something? And he says, pour la dernière fois, dis-moi. For the last time, you demon, are you going to come back to me? And she says, no. And she takes her ring and throws it back on him. And he kills her. That's what cowardly men do. And he simply kills her. He pulls a knife and kills her. And again, as, as it happen, often happens with cowardly men, he falls on top of her. And she says, Vous pouvez m'arrester, c'est moi qui la tue. You can, you can arrest me. It, it, it was I who killed her. Ma Carmen, ma Carmen, adoré. Oh, Carmen, my adored Carmen. Adored my posterior. I mean, come on, he killed her. But that's, that's what it is. As, as the opera came out, it wasn't very successful at first. And I uh, remember, remember that I, tell, I tell, told you that Bizet died the year the, car, the, the opera went, uh, came out. And it, was, it had to be staged many times outside of France. And then it came back almost 10 years later. And then it was a huge success. And it, as it keep, keeps being a success in, in all throughout the world. It's gorgeous music. I hope you go and listen to it at uh, Ikai's Spotify, and I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Um, come back. Uh, every week we have a new lecture on, on new operas, and we already have many lectures on Ikai's YouTube, okay? Thank you very much for your company, and uh, the, these lectures have helped me a, a great deal to keep me alive and active during the pandemics, and um, I hope I, I bring some light into your existence, okay? Thank you very much. I love you. Bye-bye.